Hi everybody and welcome to my lesson on overlaid washes. Down here I have my paper with uh, masking tape around the outside just to hold it down so it doesn't come up on me. I have a one inch brush and uh, several round brushes. I have an example of the painting that we're going to try and produce today. I have an example of a flat wash that we did in previous tutorial and a graded wash that we did in a previous tutorial which is darker at the top and lighter at the bottom and today we're going to do an overlaid wash which you produce by putting down one flat wash letting it dry and then putting down a second layer letting it dry putting down a third layer letting it dry and so on until you get this layered effect okay here we have some examples that have been done by students in my other lessons so what we need to do to start with is to mix up some paint and I'm just going to take a round brush and I'm going to mix up a brown so take any any brown you've got um, I'm using a little bit of burnt sienna here and a bit of burnt umber mixed together and you want a nice big puddle of colour to work with so that you can get lots and lots of layers okay so the first one we're going to do is using the flat wash brush and we're just going to take that and we're going to put that colour a little bit more water all over the paper like this doesn't need to be precise like you like we were with the original flat wash demonstration we just need a, a fairly even coverage and we're going to dry that off really quickly using a hairdryer now ideally you don't use a hairdryer um, it's much better to let your washes dry naturally so please if you've got time do that so there we have it it's quite dry very quickly so that's good so now we're going to put on a second layer and we're going to continue using the larger of the round brushes and we're just going to put this distant hill in. So again, just start and just make it up. There's no right and wrong in this. You want most of your pigment to be at the top um, and we're just going to sort of brush it off the brush until it's more or less gone across like that. And then we're just going to quickly dry, dry it off. Just a note on uh, how to tell whether the watercolour is dry or not. You can see this is this section here is still a little bit shiny. That means it's still wet. This is um, gone all matte in matte, so you know that that is dry. So again, take the brush, the same brush, and we're going to put another hill in just about here. A little bit more pigment, just peeking up above that little mound there. This time we're just going to take it to here like that and again we're just going to wash it down just add a little a little bit more water as we come down like that. Okay when the paint's on you can dry it off.
Next layer, again into the same pigment and we're going to do this third mountain. So we're going to just put it up, up a little bit there and across. And again, finish the top and then paint it all the way down to the bottom just using a little bit of water just to fade it out a touch as you get lower down. Okay, and then dry it off again. Now, because this hill here is slightly darker in pigment, what we're going to do is just add a little bit more pigment into our wash here. So let's see if it's dark enough first of all. Oh, that should be okay. So again, let's start at the top and we're going to come down in a dip and this mountain is the one that touches the edge of the lake so we're going to finish that one about here so a nice horizontal line where the lake meets the mountain and again just fill it in with pigment we want this to be darker this one's in the foreground so well it's in the middle ground but it's in the foreground of that range of mountains so we need it to be darker than the rest Now I'm going to move on to the smaller of the brushes and we're going to add more of the darker brown into the mix. This is burnt umber that you're using here and we're going to suggest a layer of trees just in the foreground and we're going to paint the line along the bottom where the mountain touches the water and we're just going to flick upwards like that, flick upwards from the line of, of paint. Sorry about the rattling, it's very very windy in here today in my studio. I've got um, tin roofing and it does rattle a lot. So, and we're going to put a slightly more rough idea of probably a bit of forestry in that distant section there. Okay so remember just flick up from that line and let that dry. Now we're going to look at these two here and um, for that we're going to put a little of this Payne's grey colour into the brown mix. I've probably put a bit too much there but it doesn't matter. I'm just going to thin it down a bit, put a bit more brown in like so. That's burnt umber again mixed with Payne's grey and we're just going to put a soft island in here and this island's base is going to have its edge in the water so again just paint it in there we go and that's all you need 
that on that section. And then on this section over here, this one's slightly more in the foreground, so we're going to paint it slightly further down into the water. We're just going to put a little edge on it and then we're going to come up into a point and then up and make it what you want really. It doesn't have to be huge. Just make sure that it's nice and solid because it's closer to you than the rest of the, the hill forms. While we're here we can do a reflection. So all I'm doing is I'm watering down that mix of Burnt Umber and Payne's Grey and I'm going to put it slightly underneath. I'm going to leave a slight gap between the actual island and where I'm painting. I'm going to put most of the pigment nearer to the island here. And then so it, it sort of wears off as it comes down to the bottom of the reflection, like so. Same again. 